Hello everybody and welcome to the third and final game between Cloud9 and Archon Dota. Oops, I thought they were Team Archon. Apparently they're Archon Dota. I should remember that. Either way, let's get into this. This is the Star Ladder Americas group stages. Whoever gets top two in their groups, there are two groups of four, whoever is top two gets to go on through to those playoffs. And Cloud9, as we talked about, they are 1-1 in their group. Archon is 1-0. So Cloud9, if they don't win this, they are right out. Either way, we'll be getting into it. I'm joined by Vengeance on stats, and we've got PQMZ on as as on, on as my co-caster. I attempt to, to salvage this, and it didn't work. How are you doing? What do you think of an Alk second ban? Maybe just third game strats. You know, like, like now it's a best of one. You can pull out something that's yeah. You know, maybe Archon just thinking they don't want to deal with that. Ten seconds. Could be in their minds. It, also, it could just be a ban that's relevant, Five but it's not like remaining. irrelevant. Like, they haven't been prioritizing it, so it forces Cloud9 to ban the Doom, and then they get whichever hero they want, which is probably the Slatter. They prioritized it game one and was pretty good on the hero, so doing task instead, Cloud a bit more versatile. Yeah. No, yeah, no. This is our only series of the day as well, folks. This is this is it for today. We will have some more Dota after the weekend for Starlighter. I believe we have the entirety of the weekend off. But please, do not quote me on that. So, uh, let's get back into this. Yeah, Tusk for Archon, fluff and stuff. Good on that hero, just a little bit. And again, Cloud Nine, Shadowfiend, Doom. I think they banned those two every game, right? Or am I forgetting something? Radiant they banned it last game as well. I'm not sure. They did the if first it was game. I remember. It. No, they did. Okay. I think it was them the first game. I mean, yeah. if you're Archon, if you know people are banning Shadowfiend Doom against you, you get the free Doom ban as well. I think you're happy with that. I think the biggest thing is you ban Shadowfiend because they're Radiant and they have first pick. So that, that's a pretty solid ban. Doom because they're first pick, it just makes sense. Whereas when you're first pick, you have a bit more flexibility with your bans. You can ban things that aren't remaining. like staple first picks, like the Alk. Yeah. So, getting themselves up the Wyvern and Queen of Pain, Cloud9, Radiant very good with the Wyvern. And Queen of Pain seems to be a hero that everybody at this level of play is comfortable mid or even off lane. I, I like the Quat, but she's going to have quite a hard time with her positioning against her Slider. They're very good at punishing her if she plays. Yeah, so Five seconds we're going to be seeing uh, ban phase now. Let's. Do you think after that game, do you worry that Archon is going to run the Magnus again, or do you think it's not a possibility with something like Slaughter being picked up? Still a possibility, so if Cloud9 is scared of it, they can ban it, but I feel like they're probably comfortable dealing with it. I feel like last game it was just mistakes from their part as opposed to draft from Archon. Then again, you just lost to it, you might be feeling a bit down, so it's like, alright, we'll just ban it out, opt to not deal with it, make them pick something different. Depends what mentality Teepan's in. Um, and I always wonder about that as well, you know, you're down, you're down a game, oh, not really down a game, you're on the deciding game, you're down in the group stages in a position where you really need this win, do you pull out something crazy, or do you fall back on something that you think has worked over and over? Because, as we talked about last game, I have to imagine these teams scrim each other all the time. Um, I think it really depends on the draft, like, Quop Wyvern is quite open-ended, there's not too much crazy stuff you can do. Off that in theory, Ten but remaining. also quite solid. So you, you'll look to see what the opposing team drafts, see if you can fit like a niche Loud pick in there, or if it just works down. out to pick what you're most comfortable with. Yeah. But most of the surprising heroes, quote unquote, are out. Like Elks, a really explosive hero, can surprise you. Probably not so much these days, but he's out the pool. There's no Brood, remaining. there's no Shadow Fiend, so kind of. Five seconds a, a good mix of heroes banned out. I don't think there'd be too much surprising stuff. Reserve There's still Wisp in the pool though. That's something that C9 could go for here. Going to do Iotani. Yeah, and I mean, it's not... 
I feel like it's something they're pretty experienced with, and it is something that's really hard for Archon. I mean, yes, yeah, Slaughter has a big AoE, and I think Tusk can also be a bit of a pain to that combo, but they haven't shown anything on Archon that really writes out the IO Tiny yet. I'm actually desperately trying to pull up stats on C9's IO business, because I know I've seen it a few times, but yeah, I think it could be a very nice, as you said, bit surprising to get it in this late in the draft. I open most of the games, but the biggest difference this game is a lot of the counters are already banned out and the laning stage is looking pretty favorable for it. Yeah. Instead they opt for the Lich pickup, so that's a semi-deny from Archon as well, opting to get away from them. Yeah, I like the Lich here. It's, again, we see it a lot in matches versus the Slaughter and... It's a nice way to buff up your team uh, against that minus armor. And also, it feels like the, as we talked about it before, there's been a small change to sacrifice. Now you can just do it in front of their faces and not share experience. But also the speed on Chain Frost was sped up. And I think that is leading to, as people are still getting used to it, we've been seeing more impactful Chain, chain Frosts. How much was the projectile speed increased? Just a little bit. Okay, because it's still pretty term. slow. Yeah, but I, I think it's something where maybe you think that you've split enough or you're far enough away that it won't hit you and it's coming back at you. And it's the Venom Monster, which Archon have a very good uh, very good player with and very good experience. They generally run it on Moo, though. I would be interested to see if they're going to put it on Monkeys for any of these games. Well, if they're going to stay true to what they did last game, it's and the game where they played it yesterday, it's going to be a safe lane Venno, and they're going to look to offlane the slider and pick up a different mid. I think that's their preferred way of playing it, and I think it works fairly well. However, there is a lot of versatility with it. It could still be a support. And it's the Beast Master again. This dominated that first game where they just were constantly split pushing. I wouldn't say that... We're seeing an obvious split push lineup already, but I mean, Queen of Pain can certainly push quite a bit, and Cloud9 just needs one more hero to complete that lineup. Yeah, definitely. It, these masters also pretty good at fighting, so they have options with their draft and like this. If Plan A fails, they have a Plan B. Whereas Arkan, it feels a bit more get a pick off, get snowballing, take towers. That doesn't work. Admittedly, they still have another hero to pick, so you might see a bit more of the draft being defined here. But as of now, how they want to win this game is fairly obvious. Yeah. So, we've got Archon waiting on that next pick. This is going to also be a support Venno. I didn't think of that, actually. It, it doesn't have to be a core Venno. The hero is very useful. Oh, yeah. Sorry, were you saying something? You just cut out. I, I said about this possibility of a support banner. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Alright. <laughs> I guess you were looking stuff up at the time. Yeah, I was probably looking up. I couldn't actually find Cloud9's IO stuff, and so I was, like, super frustrated. Sorry, my apologies. 100% focus on the drop. No more trying to get some insider information using Dat Dota. But, yeah, I feel like it's nice and flexible. The only thing I'm worried about maybe for Archon, they're doing better than in that first game, but they are still rocking just the Slaughter Tusk as lockdown. And while Tusk actually has quite a bit if you chain together that Walrus Punch and the Snowball, Queen of Pain might be slippery, the Beast Monster might be slippery. And they kind of solidify that a bit now with the Mag, so... Again, yeah, and this lineup now looking again very similar to the, those lineups that they like to run. Um, I wonder if Cloud9 is going to ban out the Phantom Assassin. They go for the Jug. Radiant actually, Similar role. Yeah, I think it would suit them a tiny bit better, but this definitely forces Venno into support role, which is fine. Tusk has been generally getting one item up and being able to buy the ward, so Venno is probably able to get some items rolling, which I think Hero desperately needs. Yeah, and so More I feel... More importantly, levels. Five yeah. seconds remaining. I feel like Archon here... Probably just gonna pick up the Phantom Assassin again, as long as Cloud9 don't take it. They definitely could. This game it's a bit harder for Pierre though, because Wyvern's really good against the hero, you can use it to kill your own teammates. Fitch armor is annoying for PA, they've got lockdown through BKB, Beastmaster as well. Bop is also 
decent against a hero with a lot of burst damage, so it's a bit of a harder PA game. Wouldn't be surprised if they deviate from their general carry. Could be an anti-mage as well. Which... Can you make enough space here for a spectre? Um, I think it really remaining. depends on what Cloud9's last hero here is. Yeah, it does feel or, like... Or did you mean for Cloud9? No, I mean for Archon. Oh, Cloud9, I think, uh... I think Cloud9 can make enough space for a Spectre, just because they do have other tools like Hawk to make sure that she's not getting jumped, and then of course Wyvern Lich, generally good at keeping her alive. She's very squishy though, and I wouldn't be surprised if instead they go with something like the AM, because then they do kind of have a bit of split push, a bit of a uh, nice time that they come online, but it's the Lycan, Ritsu's Lycan, gonna be coming out. I miss this hero so much, but it's so cancerous to play against. And, and they do opt for the PA again, which I'm not the biggest fan of into a Lycan. I don't think you can actually man fight that hero, but it's been working well for them. It's pretty much the same lineup as what they've been running, the games they've won, so just going back to comfort. Yeah. It's actually Brax on Lycan instead. They're opting to probably run it mid against the Ag. I think it's fine, because then the Quap can deal with the slightly more annoying offlane. Yeah, it's a bit interesting. I wonder how they will change up exactly how they farm this, given that it'll be a kind of safe lane farming Queen of Pain. I feel like they've got a lot of options, though, especially if Cloud9 gets off to a good start. They can do something like the AC on the Beast Monster, Shivas on the Queen of Pain, Lycan with all the Necro Creeps, and oh, everything will fall before them. Yeah, I really like what Cloud9 can do this game. Tiny bit different, and I miss seeing Lycan in the games. I can't believe you miss seeing Lycan. I feel like he is not the most of exciting heroes, but to each their own. Let's get into it once again on the lineup of Cloud9. I don't remember who I've introduced, so we'll just go with Cloud9. Cloud9 every game. Okay, well then fine, I'll do Archon. We've got J.O. on that Phantom Assassin. Moo on the Slaughter. Venomons are going to be played up by Whitebeard. Tusk being played by Fluff and Stuff. Hopefully he has a good game. And finally, Monkeys Forever on that Magnus. And for C9, we have 1437 on the Lich, MSS on the Beastmaster this time, Ritsu on the Quap, Brax on the Lycan, and Savage or SVG on the Wyvern. Yeah, and they saw the rotation by MSS, I believe. They are pinging it out, and they do find that obs immediately. So getting very lucky with the T-board this time, much unlike the first game where they had a really rough time there. So, Beast Monster That's really be... important, this game. 30 seconds yeah. to battle. He will not be roaming free. He's got a really funky head. It's that thingy, helmet. Beast Whatever. Monster. I mean... Yeah. I actually yeah. can't see his cosmetics. They're, they're not working. Oh, I kind of can, but they're not showing. Whatever. I'll live. Oh, yeah. I'm a beast monster. That's what he's saying. Anyway, as you said, you'll live. We're going to have the normal rune split up here. And I don't know how a Lycan will do against a Magnus. It feels like they'll trade even for a while, but then with more points in Shockwave, I feel like this Magnus should have higher kill potential. I think it's pretty 50-50. Lycan, however, can go to the woods pretty quickly, so he can abandon the lane, or vice versa, if the mag looks to go for a gank, he can push the tower in pretty quickly, so I'd favor the Lycan through the early levels, but once the shockwave comes up and the bottle crowing starts happening, it gets a bit harder for him. Yeah. But the wolf harass is also really cancerous, Yeah. monkeys will have to worry about that. But then that's what I was talking about. That's what I was thinking. I feel like uh, Brax probably won't make this mistake again, but you have a very easy way of, oh, he needs one more? isn't able to get it. I think a couple more auto attacks there and he would have been able to get a shockwave into a kill. I feel like positioning there as a melee hero, of course, hard against the Magnus and so there's more chances of skewering Brax around, although he's going to be careful as I said, now that he's already fallen prey to the skewer once. Uh, that one mistake hurts you so much. It burns for so much of your region and of course he's very self as well. But I don't think it will happen again. Oh, they actually go for the block on the ice shards on SVG, but of course, he can just eat a tree and flap away. So, running a kind of dual lane up top, and in bottom, we've got a uh, Lich Quap dual lane as well, trying to stop Jo's farm. I actually really like how C9 have allocated their lanes this game. I just presumed it would be the Quap top, but in theory, it makes a lot more sense what they're doing, because Beastmaster's 
not going to care as much about like the slider test lane. He can get a decent farm here, and the Quop's going to put a lot more pressure than the Beastmaster would on Bayo's PA. Yeah, it does feel like they should have a very nice bottom lane for C9. How do you itemize is this mid lichen? Do you end up popping yourself a bottle? Are you just trying to get items? Oh, he managed to get the regen, okay. The wolf tried for it, but ended up going down. That's actually a pretty big deal not being able to get the rune there with the wolf. But I think he definitely goes bottle. You need the sustain against Magnus and being able to secure the rune with a wolf and also harassing in the lane is really important. But I'd expect him to go for the pretty normal build. Maybe you see a medallion in there before the Vlads. People have been playing with occasionally. Yeah. So, in mid though, looking like Monkeys is having a really nice time up against Brax. He's got the creep advantage and he's really just able to get a lot out of the wave since, as you said, that early life lost for Brax not doing him any favors in the lane. Now, top, we do have things looking fine for MSS as well. This is going to be a pretty farmed beast monster, imagining the same build as last time, Necrobooks into Blink. Should be about right. Blink is a bit more important this game though, because he's the prime source of initiation. They, sure, they can have the Wyvern kind of fly up and ulti, they can have the Quap Blink in or the like and run. They don't have as good of a lockdown this game, so maybe he helps for the Blink first. But I could definitely see the Necrobook to fit with the Lycan timing, so they just have like double Necrobooks and they kind of run at your towers. Depends how they want to play. Yeah. It definitely merits for both. It'll be really interesting to see kind of how these team fights end up working because certainly we've all seen how RP can be such a big game changer. But if you don't RP the Beast Monster, it's entirely possible that he. Oh, they actually goes for the skewer, trying to get a kill onto Brax. He will need another shockwave, and can he get this? He sh misses the shockwave, and now Monkeys Forever is the one on the back foot. Uh, there is a support. Oh, not rotating, actually just contesting the pull. I thought Lich might come in to try to be a pain to Monkeys Forever, and in fact, Guys, Lich is maybe that? is coming in, but Monkeys gonna get a bounty, should be just fine. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for him. Doing really well mid, and the priority now. A few minutes ago, like, they were about 2 or 3 CS. Now he's opened up a pretty big lead, just because of the Rasa. Now he has a lot of kill potential once oh. he hits 6. Down bottom, Whitebeard actually just TPs straight out of lane, realizing he would not be able to walk it off with all of those slows, and does manage to get out with his life. So, a nice play there. And, uh, yeah, we hadn't mentioned this, but C9's uh, lineup, they've got Primal Roar, they've got Winter's Curse. And I believe the mini stun, yeah, the mini stun on Chain Frost. Yeah, they have a lot of good things against. Oh, I meant, I meant Lockdown was light, other than those big, long cooldown spells. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, you can TP out a lot of their stuff this yeah. game as well, but... It's, it's alright. I think it might be one of those games we've seen where, you know, you're having trouble getting the damage on the enemies. And now Moo going in onto SVG doesn't have Cold Embrace skilled yet. They're going to snowball in onto SVG as well, and that'll be our first blood coming out onto Moo. Fluff and stuff, doing work. Yeah, he's fairly squishy once he gets Arctic Burn, if he's not able to, like, fly over the ice shards or something. And MSS doesn't have level 6 yet, so he can't protect him when anything like that happens. Yeah. However, five minutes in for him to only die once to this fairly aggressive lane, I think is fine. They're getting lots of levels on the Beastmaster as well, considering it's a dual lane. Now, Magnus has an RP up. He's hit level 6 already. This only in the game, I feel like you should use it, or it's kind of you lose it. But as you mentioned, he feels maybe a bit scared that if he leaves mid lane, he'll lose a lot of damage on the tower. Do you try to make something happen with your RP, or do you just wait until you have Blink or get a Lucky Haste Rune, or an Invis? Definitely try and use it on the Lycan, or as you say, if he gets a good rune, maybe he goes for um, a counter gank with a TP. I expect him to just sit mid and try to get his items up before he moves around too much, because it's for the other game, it's quite hard for Mag to move around before he has his items. It's just a bit clunky. Like, you kind of try and walk up to people and it doesn't always work out. He's actually pressuring the Lycan's farm a bit here, so he's accomplishing a lot by just staying in the lane. 
Yeah, he's definitely dominating this mid lane. I mean, Lycan's having a really hard time. He's taken a number of he's those dead. shockwaves, and yeah, now he is dead. Snowball in. Couple more auto attacks. Can they get them? Yeah, they need use the skewer. Not sure if it was needed, and uh, they get a kill really on nice Lycan. Yeah, and as you Later said, on, they can kill him again when he has RP. It so. feels like a bit easier to rotate this game than Lost. The lanes are just more free flowing this game. There's not like a definitive lane that you can't get kills on. Okay, so maybe you can't kill the quad bottom, but there's a Lich, there's a Wyvern, there's a Beastmaster, which are all easy to get on targets. So and he has better follow up this game, I feel like. One of them is about to expire, but again, they got a super deep ward. C9 seems to love this. I'm a bit surprised they didn't smoke it out on Archon. Um, I've seen C9 do this in a lot of their games, so maybe it's a spot you check. It didn't seem to have much impact, this game, but I do feel like these deep wards really help, as you said. You get vision of folks when they're coming in to the towers and so on, and you can just gank um, dive towers and know if rotations are coming more easily. What's like this though are generally a bit more valuable when the laning stage breaks down. It definitely serves its purpose as a lane ward, but the value of it is not as high this early. However, this ward's scanning out the mag rotation now, so it looks like he's just going for the rune though. Like... Yeah. And Fluff and Stuff yeah. not going to be able to get much done because he was completely seen. I actually really like the warding this game. Being able to get like wards like this. This this early, it, it's not too easy. But when you see heroes and in the laning stage is fairly static, supports are pretty free around. So yeah. nice to see them in that space. Now we've got an Arctic Bone coming out on Moo. I think he'll just sprint this off. Unfortunately, taking crap tons of health. I wanted to say they've actually stacked a lot of experience onto one four three seven, and they the Wyvern was only level four until he was only level three until recently. Just hit level four while the supports both of them on Archon. Very low level as well, although now Whitebeard's starting to do some jungle. Um, I feel like getting up this Winter's Curse is pretty huge, though, for C9. It means that they can get that early pick off and then, you know, chill for a little bit while they wait for Primal Roar, probably, or whatever else they use to come back off cooldown. Well, as you say, they have the Roar now, so they're probably going to look to smoke with Beastmaster Lich. They can probably kill anyone they find with that combo. Needs to smoke to another hero. That will give Wyvern the space to get his levels. However, they're not doing that right now. Maybe they are just waiting for something. Yeah. Braxis... The Lycan has his medallion as well. Yeah, that's what I wanted to call out. He's going for the medallion. I was maybe expecting a Vlad's Rush so that he could rotate into the jungle a bit, but it is going to be that medallion, and... I mean, he'll be able to really hurt a single target, but if he gets RP'd at all during this engagement, J.O. may just click him down super easily. Medallions are really good farming tool though. As a, you don't take too much damage if your wolves are tanking for you, and it lets you do engines. And it's also a really strong rush item. So I don't think there's a problem with it at all. The rush is going to be extremely important this game. Whichever team gets it, I feel like he's going to have the stronger engagement. Oh goodness, did they just try to smoke? smoke? Yeah, he's unfortunately going to go down here, but he did completely break a smoke, and I would argue that, you know, he's one of their supports. If you have to have somebody go down, you're probably happier that the support broke the smoke, although, yeah, they saw him place the ward. I don't know if they'll catch both wards, just because they just used, did the one here. I don't know if they'll catch this one. And the, yeah, they're pinging over there, so maybe they think Ancients are blocked? Unfortunately, not saving the ward there. If he didn't drop the ward and just died, but gank it would be ideal situation, right? But trying to get the most out of it as he can, maybe just dropping the ward in panic, thinking maybe they won't notice, you know? Yeah. Now, Monkeys Forever is stalking up Ritsu. He has the amp damage on him. They could certainly RP. Oh, goodness. He actually takes quite a bit of damage. He's skewered backwards into the Slytherin Crush. And do they have the damage up? But one more auto attack. They have the Snowball just in case it wasn't enough. And that is a very dead Ritsu. And that's what we were talking about. I think a very good usage of the RP. You know, it's early game. You kill off one hero. You get closer towards your blink. By the time you have up that blink dagger, it'll be off cooldown. And maybe you can do some extra work. But down bottom, looking like someone's about to be taking a beating. And it's going to be Whitebeard, Kappa, Ross. But we have a wall of wards here, so it's quite hard for them to dive in. Yeah. I I guess I was a bit surprised initially that they didn't go for it, but as you said, fighting against a Veno under a tower, yeah, you might kill the Veno, but the rest of you may die in return. 
Yeah, I definitely don't want to give up any advantage here because Arkan are farming pretty well. They're just edging out moment. The gold draft is minimal, but their cores are all just in and around. Magnus is definitely the clear winner though. He's got his blinker in 20 gold on top of a full stick, Arcanes. And he also has some stacks in the woods to clear out. Hopefully C9 don't find this for their sake. Oh, you sake. think it would? Oh, okay. I was about to say you think it would end poorly for C9. I feel like they have good positioning right now. So, but yeah, now he's going for the Vlad's on Lycan. The only thing I worry, well, I worry about in these team fight engagements, the RP into the Slithering Crush, maybe the Snowball to follow it up. It feels like a lot of lockdown. Unless this is going to be a BKB. And 1437 walking right on top of Fluff and stuff, who's then primal roared, takes the axes to the face, pops it into the snowball to delay things, might be able to stop them from dewarding his ward. Where is his backup? It's coming in, and on the back lines, they do manage to kill off Wyvern, but they get the ward, and now Monkeys Forever, he goes forwards, he skewers too, but it means that they miss the slithering crush on one, and Monkeys Forever goes down. They should have this kill on MSS though, but here comes the Sonic Wave! It's gonna do quite a bit of damage, but is it enough? Slithering crush on Ritsu, here comes the big bad wolf, one more auto attack on Ritsu, they manage to get it and now it is fight of crits versus crits can no doesn't matter if it's crits versus crits you can't bloody catch him I, I can't see the fight recap so you're gonna have to tell me who that favored you gotta just turn it on man but we no, will it, see like it's, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't like it's it's really annoying me hmm. like, it was okay, slightly it, in favor. Mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just takes a while. The game has. The way it's programmed is it tries to wait until the action's done, which unfortunately does mean that if you have long, drawn out engagements, it doesn't catch it. But slightly in favor of Archon, pretty even overall. I think the real winning part for Archon there is just that their Phantom Lancer. Uh, sorry, Phantom Assassin did survive, and now is going to get this big, fat old stack. Although, I believe. Uh, Lycan got quite a bit of gold off of that too, yeah, finishing up that Vlad's. Another thing to notice, they didn't use RP there, so they have that available to them again. Yeah. So. And Jay are using a salve 13 minutes into the game, I love that. Um. Efficiency, if you know you're going to farm a big stack, you just buy self, then yeah. you can continue. Oh, I know he's got the helm, so he doesn't need to buy any more selves. Exactly. Now, taking a look around, we're going to have some nice item pickups. As you pointed out, we got the helm on J.O. Whitebeard is rocking shoes, guys. One for He only needs one, because he's the wiggle snake. He's kind of got one foot thing. Tusk, also with the tranquils. Fluff and stuff likes to save up for the blink dagger, which I think would be really nice here. Just somebody could be in trouble. You can actually... It's hard... You can do the snowball over the cursed unit and then pick them up and save them or pick up people attacking the cursed unit. You can also, depending on how good you are at it, pick up the people who are attacking the cursed unit just by blinking next to them, but not the cursed unit. It's, um, it's difficult, though. It can be a bit messy. Yeah, it's, it's hard. That, that second one that I said there is much more difficult than just rolling over the cursed unit as long as you've got something you can roll to. So both cool players that we might be seeing come out this game. And Blink Dagger... More and... importantly, the raw... I think. Oh, the yeah. curse is nice if you can do it, but saving people from the raw is so annoying for the Beastmaster. Yeah, it definitely means... It's kind of interesting because uh, sometimes the Beastmaster just uses the raw to take someone out of the fight, but of course oh, here... Oh, the pop is dead. Oh yeah, she's taking another Slithering Crush, but she's got a lot of backup and dead, you say, but there's a Winter's Curse coming out, and the Lich ulti bouncing between the Moo. Is he gonna find a way out of this? No, Slithering Crushes, he's trying to walk it off, but there is a Wolfman on you, and that is a very, very dead... Uh... Wolfman, they saw that smoke, I think? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, Mad Pings. Yeah, cause, well, Mad Pings, that could also be like, you fed, you idiots. Um. No, but that was Monkeys doing it, so mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it was like they have vision there, but they, they should be able to get the Roche. There's not too much Arkham can do about this without two of their cores. Yeah. And Cloud9 getting themselves a bit of a gold and experience lead with that one, and not feeling like Archon can do anything since they don't have their cores with those big spells, this Roshan not going to take long enough, I think. It's actually being pretty slow because just the Lycan, Lycan is doing it, but not long enough. But they're going for it! They think it's lower than it is, and oh gosh, they Venobomb everybody! Slinderblast flying around, but it is not enough. 1437 is dead. Jeo is still full health. Whitebeard might be down, but I think Jeo can turn around and fight and kill off Brax. He has vision of the TP, but no! Monkey's Verve against the Skewer! And that's a dead Brax! Now they're working on SVG over on the side. Physical damage immune, but you're still ticking down to that scary, scary Poison Nova, and now now, let's see if they can catch out MSS, and they can. 
So I don't think they'll catch out Ritsu here. Yeah, the Blink Hero a bit rough, but a huge turnaround coming out of Orkon, and they'll get themselves the Roshan as well. Nice of Cloud9 to weaken this baby up for them. Yeah, I guess Cloud9 would just... They wanted to zone out the heroes from Archon, but they didn't commit enough damage to the Roche, so they actually gave time for the heroes to respawn. Oh, the and... Ice Shards blocking the pickup! Sorry. At least they didn't deny it or not pick it up. Yeah. You know, it's good enough. I'm actually really surprised that Cloud9 didn't finish that faster, but... They hey only... Archon just threatening. Yeah. Much. Whoa, I didn't know the Tomato had like a sword sticking out of his... Oh, that is that the dagger effect? Yeah, I'm... Really small. I didn't know that actually stuck a sword into someone's back. Oh well, just small things. I normally play on like low quality because I used to game on a laptop, so I don't notice these things. But on topic, I wanted to say I think the Roshan took a really long time because they only had Brax working in on it. They could have actually brought in the Beast Monster or something, which would have sped it up, of course, with that inner Beast passive being there as well. But decided not to, and we have a little bit of a gank coming out from Alcon. They throw out the dagger too quick for her to be able to use that cold embrace and now move. Uh, sorry, Brax is running away. He should be fine. He is really false, but that's transformation down. Yeah, they're gonna get a tower off that rotation, so definitely worth the smoke usage. A kill in a tower is always favorable. However, they're gonna have to look to defend bottom here or look to push tier 2 and just give up bottom, because MSS is pressuring. Yeah, you know, with his double boars, which only have two legs. So he is... Oh, they pick up a haste rune. Monkeys Forever could make something big happen here if they're not careful. They've got wolves coming in, but he's already blunt forward. Uses the LP immediately Primal Roar, but where is the rest of his team? And that was the save from the Primal Roar in the Snowball. And now comes the crits from J.O. With, uh, with the Empower as well, doing so much damage. J.O. hitting like a truck, hitting fast like a machine gun. He is the famous machine gun truck that you've heard so much about. That snowball was actually really big as well, because I yeah. think it would have been like a few bounces on the chain frost, but... Oh, we have an engagement continuing. They slithering crush actually getting out of the AoE. I think they're worried about that Winter's Curse. They're gonna cold embrace up one of the wolves instead! Missing out on Brax, and now Brax actually dodges the slithering crush on accident, but that was a big misplay from SVG, and he's gonna hear about that in the morning. Going down to J.O.'s crits, and they're in good position to take this bottom tower. They didn't lose the bottom tower that you were talking about them pushing, and they might be able to siege a tier 2 off of the back of this. So, really good series of play coming out of Alcon, and you can see from this net worth, we just had like a 7,000 gold swing. Bennett wasn't even there for that, so he's off farming. Meanwhile, this is like ideal Dota coming out from Alcon right now. Using four heroes with an Aegis to get advantage, letting one hero face your making. Yeah. And now the Sanjin Yasha is up on Phantom Al Assassin 2. <laughs> I don't know why, I keep trying to say Phantom Lancer and we just had Phantom Alassan. Like, what does that even mean? Um, but Alassan. she. Alassan? Like yeah. It. Uh, it's. Uh... Anyway, um, she is going to be tanky and also hitting like a truck with her lucky crits, so she's doing well. Uh, Venno getting close to his Blink Dagger. I'm not sure if he'll go for the Axe first or the Blink Dagger, but might just want the Blink Dagger to make sure he can follow up on the RP and not have to be relying on that Snowball in. You could see a Force as well for. Like, more saving purposes. Radiant Definitely, yeah. I feel like a utility Radiant item here is better than an axe straight off. Yep. Help your team out. Maybe even a glimmer cape. The glimmer's not as good when you're playing against double necro. And again, Magnus going for the Shadow Blade. It's, again, as you said, it's hard maybe against double necro. Uh, double necro? We, oh. Is under we, do you well, think, I'm well, actually, the yeah, I think, I think so. I wasn't sure if we'd see double necro. He'd try to go for, like, uh, the Abyssal or something. To lock down yeah, I, I actually just kind of presumed Dying he had it, but that's just my lichen stereotypical, you know, no, 20 minutes. No, he has the belt of strength, but I... Yeah, I, okay, he's getting it. Okay. So I, I am right in the end, he just doesn't have it yet, because he went for the medallion instead. Yeah. And also getting denied the Roche really messes with your farm. Yeah, but they're going to trade towers, and this is a lineup that can push on Cloud9, and they want to kill off whoever comes in, but Ritsu kind of showing, showing that he's there, and... They can actually kill them here if they yeah, keep getting one by uh, one. Yeah, comes in. Oh, goodness. He actually jumps onto the creep wave, critting out everything. But no follow-up, and they don't bother Primal roaring him. I think I'm really surprised with this. They actually snowball forwards a bit. Cloud9 really afraid. They are fighting scared, and I feel like with Hawk Vision, they should have known that only three came bottom, and taking that engagement would have been favorable, but they didn't go for it. I think it's a safer option not going on the HSP there, because... There were DP rotations available, I'm guessing, from 
I mean, monkeys didn't have one, it was on cooldown, but I'm sure Venno did. It would have been really long, though. The TPs. I don't know, there was only one TP to this tower, so it would probably be like a five and a half second TP. Mm -hmm. About the time it would take them to kill the PA and then the Aegis would to respawn as well. Fluff and they're stuff is going. Yeah, he's going one into five. He's actually snowballing onto 1437. Best option, but he's getting primal roared up, and that is a very dead fluff and stuff. But here comes the follow up. Slithering crush on MSS. Can they get the damage? They've got the poison burning on MSS, and he is just trying to TP out, but they can they kill him in time? Yes, before he gets the TP out. And now here comes Magnus. Let's see what he's got. He's got an RP in the bank. This team is so split up, and they just end up critting forwards. Now Brax is trying to come in, but if he's not careful you're taking an LP to the face and there is the slithering crush where is my LP come on monkeys there's gonna be an ult thrown around that does nothing more auto attacks coming out Jayo can't actually blink on top of them but he's got it and a one-man LP for Brax slowed down transformations done and he is dead five-man team wipe coming out of Archon and this game looking very much in control for them I do not quite know what C9 does to get back in this I think it is split push or rat yeah they need to do some Kind of play where they push out the lanes, have one hero kind of quote unquote overextend and then just magically have four heroes appear behind him. Rinse repeat about five times and hope Arkhan is stupid enough to fall for it that many times. That's their way back into this because they can push out lanes, they have decent vision from the Hawks, so it is possible that they come back. Very unlikely, but it is possible and they have to play for that. They can't just play where, okay, we're going to defend our base with Wyvern with the. Um, Axis from Beastmaster. If they do that, they're just going to get out farmed and out late gamed. They have to do some kind of play that puts it favorable for them to actually win this game. Yeah. Fortunately, it's a really risky play. Yeah, it's not looking good for Cloud9. And this is the funny thing. I feel like they actually did pretty okay in the lanes. Ritsu definitely won his lane. Top lane seemed to be one where MSS got a lot of farm. Mid was lost by Brax, but... We've talked about this before. Cloud9 is a very, although Alcon has it, Cloud9 is a very experienced team with members like Brax and 1437. Alcon also has some old timers, though, being Fluff and Stuff and Jo. I think Jo has been in the scene forever, is my understanding. He played over in was it SCA as well for a while. He played on Rave. I he, no, he was on EG a long time ago, back before I think I even knew what Dota was. But I could be wrong on that one. So yes, he played on Rave most recently. Who didn't manage to get to TI? Oh, there's also daggers everywhere. I like this. Um, but oh, they have the jump out. There's the Warriors punch. Where's the follow up? MSS is blown out of the map with a 1,131 damage crit. Damn, it feels good to have good RNG. That was really fortunate timing on the daytime. I don't think they had vision of boys, so he might have lived, but fortunate for MSS. Yeah. And J.O. has the basher up, going to be working towards that abyssal blade. Another thing They're I'm... double tipping down bottom as well to try and catch rats. Yeah. Another thing I'm maybe not so fond of on C9's lineup, they've done this for a few games, they're trying to force the... A lich to build the mech and it feels like it comes out too late to be impactful and Brax needs to use that transformation but he might be stunned up RP as well they stacked those and now can they do something with this winter's curse Muggy's forever taking a lot of damage uses the skewer the shockwave doesn't hit and now Brax ready to turn around Moo taking way too much damage uses the slithering crush but the beautiful splinter blast he's gonna get one he's gonna get two and Brax getting himself a nice crap ton of gold is the technical term but we have another engagement where Ritsu went down somewhere somehow I'm guessing the snowball followed his blink or some way he dies. Maybe J.O. just happened to like slow him down and they yeah. caught him down after the dagger. Oh goodness, and they know they don't have the Winter's Curse, but I don't know if they want to fight here either. They blink up to the high ground, they actually throw out a dagger. I think if that crit, J.O. might follow it up, he might follow it up anyway. He's just going to knock out 1437, he decides better of it. Does he know the state of the primal roar? He should have a good idea that it's still up, having his teammates yell at him, hey, it wasn't used on us, and so he is going to get the hell out of there. But yeah, he got lucky bashes. Jo's doing well with the RNG. You can see that he practices his crits, practices his bashes. That um, might be why they just keep picking PA, he, RNG. Yeah, I would so actually... That's exactly what Cloud9 needed to do when this happened. If they can continue doing that, it worked out favorably for them, then they have a way back in. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, placing wards like this is not the ideal way of getting back into oh, the game. Oh, and there's going to be a Warus punch up. Cold Embrace delaying MSS's death. Can they turn this around? 1437 coming in, but he's stunned up. The Lich LT doesn't end up bouncing enough, and while the Primal Roar came out, I think, yeah, there's one crit. Let's see if J.O. gets to finish up other people or if Moo finally gets a kill. Moo illuminating them. He's getting a bash, but nope, J.O. takes it. You know, just a casual crit, and now they're working in on SVG. There's a snowball as well. While Mike, Ro uh, while Kappa Ross might go down elsewhere, it is not enough, and... Yeah, Lycan gets a kill on mid. They're gonna take your tier two. He's got such fluffy Actually, tails, attempting though. Attempting Rosh, but he's not up yet, so gonna have to push out attack. lanes. Maybe one of them stays in here, or they leave the seashore to scout it out because it can spawn any time. Yeah. So Jo just gonna return to farming. I figured the abyssal. After the abyssal, I use satanic bots, and then maybe something else, or. Do you think there's maybe another utility item he can go here? Gaddy's not too bad of an item, just because it's not that relevant this game with the amount of stuff that goes through it. And it also helps you stay on targets a bit better. I can see it working out. And also just tanks you off a lot. It's also really efficient with the empower. Oh, monkeys forever. Oh, oh he whiffs God, the right. RP. Actually, the first one we've seen him whiff in this series, right? Unlike the last time. And I this puts them on the back foot. Brax realizing he can totally go wreck some shit up, not having to worry about the RP. Here he comes. Monkeys forever taking a lot of damage, but they immediately put the minus armor on him as well, and he is stunned up. Don't think they'll be getting any kills today. So. I actually smoke up. They're looking to go back in. Plus, gonna look to find someone. Fluff is playing really far up. They have to know this is coming, and unless he catches out SVG, I think actually a mistake for Fluff to play that far up. It gave away the fact that if Fluff is comfortable there, it means he has backup that means business, and they'll catch out SVG, but I think you're okay with losing your Wyvern. Well, maybe not okay with the amount of crits J.O. is getting. He's really important, though, so while oh. he's dead for 40, I are kind of going to feel really comfortable doing whatever they want, and they might actually find MSS here. Yeah, MSS, he's been illuminated. Ice shots coming out. Slithering crush. A few more auto attacks will do it. And for, oh uh, no, J.O. gets that one too. I didn't, I wasn't quite sure. I was going to say, actually, the change to the dagger where it can apply attack modifiers on hit, I wonder if he can get a lucky bash into killing the quap. Yeah, definitely. So, I You mean, bash off the dagger into blink into a missile quap's dead. She's super squishy right now. Yeah. So a Even nice... if you just happen to blink on her and normally bash, I think she's dead in two hits with one crit, so it's really hard life for Quop. I think it means playing the Quop against the Phantom Assassin. Oh, the Lich is going down. Can Moo finish the dot job, or is it going to be Dot for Whitebeard? And it looks like Whitebeard's getting it. Suddenly, out of nowhere, this game was pretty even. Maybe even a lead for Cloud9. We're 28 to 12. And yeah, they're trying to split push as hard as they can, but instead they might just be getting caught out. The Wolfman, though, doing wolf things. Can Phantom Assassin cut him off? I think he's just going to try to TP out. Good idea from Brex, just making space. If they go for that kill, they're not pushing your high ground, they're not pushing your over tier twos. And him living there is also really important. Like, if this happens, they, they can maybe prolong the game. Unfortunately, with SVG, look, he might, yeah, he gets skewered away from his TPs right here. Yeah, and while he does have that Glimmer Cape, they're willing to wait it out. He is slow. He's buying a lot of time here. Maybe they can push the top tower. As I say, he's buying a lot of time. Of course, there was the 1,100 crit that came out. Really slow. Didn't help slow things down there. So. Yeah, Jay is a beast on this hero, apparently. Yeah, he is... Doing very well. Good RNG. I mean, also, he's got crap tons of damage. You've got the Empower as well buffing you up, right? Like, you don't need to go a Battle Fury to wreck up their lineup. You can also farm faster than you maybe should. This is, I mean, J.O.'s net worth is huge because he's 15019, but his net worth is also big because they made stacks that he could take really early on with the help of the Magnus. So it's a well-executed draft and a nice thing to play around him. And he's just going to stand up here and take it. He actually goes in two shots, Lich! And J.O. has been practicing. Maybe he'll take MSS with him. They're just trying to trade towers elsewhere, but Brax is nowhere to be found. He finally TP's back in, and J.O., I think he's just going to take your Rax. Unless they can Winter's Curse. I, I think you don't even Winter's Curse J.O. here, right? You Winter's Curse someone else. Hope J.O. crits, the sh uh, crits the, uh, them to death, and yeah, 
Deo now, oh, Sonic Wave off to the side, does manage to pick off Whitebeard, the Snowball not saving his life, Fluff and Stuff now in the danger zone as well. Oh, Axe has come out, but here comes Deo, can he get the crits? He's stunned up with that Primal Roar, and there's the Winter's Curse, meaning that Deo's gonna take quite a bit of damage, but he gets one crit, can he get another? Ritsu goes down, can you get the Rampage, Deo? I would like to see it. Let's see if he can do good work onto Brax, he needs some more auto attacks, there is the Cold Embrace though, it's gonna slow things down, and maybe Deo needs to be a little bit more careful not having a second life, but he doesn't care, he crits, he bashes, that's another kill. Here comes the Lich, but I think as long as J.O. stays away, he's gonna be just fine not taking the Lich ulti. Can he save the friend Monkey forever though? He can, with a big crit. And J.O. is now 20-0 and 9, and gonna casually take the Raxes. Maybe kill a Catapult for a little bit of regen. Maybe kill the Creep Wave for a little bit of regen. Yeah. And oh, oh kill the Wyvern, kill. get the Rampage, get the Rampage. It's probably been too actually, long. Actually, no, I guess he can't, he has no regen. Yeah, so I, I also think it might have been too long for the Rampage. Makes me sad. But yeah, I'm not quite sure. on everything. He just needs to pick up a rapier and that will redeem. <laughs> um, I think that Cloud9 there, it was a very messy engagement for them, but also J.O. with the Aegis was at the point where he could 1v1 all of them. I think you had to give up Rax. Instead, they ended up giving up Rax and all of their lives. He's casually holding 7,000 net worth. Oh, gold, not net worth. His net worth is three times that. So you've got 7k on Phantom Assassin. I assume bots... He could... I think Fox is too early. He, he just wants to get stats or damage. Yeah, he Dops can sell the... which I like. And he can sell the Aquila if he needs a TP slot, so... Or just come late and 1v5 them. Maybe they'll get a pick off onto Fluff and stuff. They can see him. He's under a sentry. Let's see if there's any sort of follow-up. But he blinks away, realizing something funky was going on. Yeah, uh, he's also really hard to kill. He's like a puck at this point. If you just snowball, you can blink away and then you can away as well. It's annoying to catch him. They actually burn the ulti looking for the Venno, but... Oh my bejesus. Yes, they do, but Venno, he just blinks away, and now they're going in over on the sidelines. Moo, he's taking a lot of damage, but here comes J.O., who kills off his ally, but I don't think he cares too much about that. He's actually silenced up, gonna make it hard to get in, but there's the poison nova dropped on everybody, and J.O.'s just still gonna poke around, critting people to death. Let's see if they can find SVG. Fluff and stuff is here. Has the roll in, and the blink away from the rest of the Cloud9 lineup. They don't want anything to do with this. The Wyvern's gonna go down slowly but surely. So far, Finally, a kill that Jo doesn't get. Unfortunately, the heroes that are dead don't have buyback, so the two that are alive are gonna have to throw their lives away and probably buyback here to defend their axe. Yeah, it's not looking good for the lineup of Cloud Nine. They are now at a twenty thousand net worth deficit, twenty thousand experience deficit, and. Huh? That's pretty much like at the point where Jay can 1v5. They're actually yeah. opting to kill a bit, they're not going straight for the rocks. Yeah. But they're gonna snowball and can they get the crits? They actually take a while to kill off Brax, but as you said, he goes down once, might have to buy back and go down twice. I don't think they have the defense on C9. Unless for some reason Archon decides to go in one by one, I actually do not think they can possibly defend this against the hugeness that is J.O. with the Empower. And now they've got an invisible monkeys forever. Doesn't even need to use any of his spells. The Skewer is going to miss on SVG, but that is our GG call. They casually RP Ritsu, and he is cold embraced BKB, but J.O. doesn't care. He'll just auto attack what he wants at this point. And it looks like Archon have secured their spot. I'm pretty sure they've secured their spot in the top two. And C9 is out of stall out of playoff contentions with two losses in their side of the group stages. That's unfortunate though, because you'd expect Cloud9 to be one of the two to go up, I think. I think most people were saying that they were the team to beat when we asked uh, Complexity. They were, said that they had been worried about Cloud9, as had Leviathan. So everybody kind of worried about Cloud9 in this group stages, and now looking like they're the ones to take a fall. So anyway, do you have any final words? I think both teams actually played quite well throughout the set. Archon just showing that they're very comfortable with this draft. And maybe you just have to ban out the mag against them in the second stage, so it uh, kind of negates them being able to draft this. I also think if you, you're you looking to take down Cloud9 because you think they're the threat, you obviously prep for them more, and maybe Cloud9 didn't prep as much for the other teams, and that's why they lost these sets. Yeah, so well played to Archon, who are going to be advancing forwards in this group stages, uh, but from the looks of it, um, 
I don't think anything really funky can happen, but yeah. And we will be going to some words from the sponsors. I'll try to see if I can bug somebody from Archon for an interview, but uh, odds on that, I don't know. They, they try to dodge them, but we'll see if we can get somebody in to ask them a few questions. If not, that'll be it from us for the night. And so please enjoy this. Oh, before we go, though. Once again, I'm Llama Down Under, joined by Vengeance on Stats. You can see his Twitter handle up here. Please show him some love. And we've got PQMZ as my co-caster. We would love feedback on how to make these calls better for you. Feel free to tweet, Facebook, uh, Twitch, 